All right, and now for the eighth one, we have that. Da, da, da. A factory. A factory produces bags of sugar with a labeled weight of 500 grams. The weights of the bags are normally dis big, big words. Normally distributed with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of three grams. Part A, write down the percentage of bags that weigh more than 500 grams. All right, um, there's a couple ways to do this, see? I think the first one, which allows me to talk about the normal distribution, is gonna be the most useful one. So, this stuff is normally distributed, okay? That means that we have something that looks a little bit like this. Okay, and the cool thing about normal distributions is that they follow a certain sort of pattern, okay? You're gonna have right down the middle, you're gonna have your mean, okay, which is written like this, so that's gonna be my mean, and every certain um, certain amount of standard deviations over, so for example, this is gonna be my mean plus one standard deviation, we're gonna have, you know, a certain amount of percent, over here it's 34%, and if you actually go back, so one mean minus a standard deviation, you also have 34%, okay? And so what's kind of cool about the normal distribution is that all these percents are defined from before. See, so if over here it's, I don't know, 19%, I don't remember the number, over here it's also 19%. So that means that for finding area and probabilities of landing a certain number, because it's normally distributed, you can like really work around this fact, see? In fact, a Ba, ba, ba. If you literally just Google this, you're going to find that exact or normal distribution looks something like this. See? And there you can see how you have one standard deviation over, uh, two over, three over, and there you have those percents I was talking about. 34% is one over, 13.6 is two over. So instead of 19, I was mistaken, 13.6. All right, whatever. See? And so that's sort of like how it looks like, okay? Now notice one thing, if I finish filling up these percents, here I have 2.1, here I have 0 0.1, and I add up these ones on the right, okay, I'm going to have 34.1 plus 13.6 plus 2.1 plus 0 0.1, that gives me 49.9, see? So it's, it's basically 50, it's basically 50, see? So that means that if I add all the values on the right side, I basically get 50%. Okay, that's the cool thing about the normal distribution. See, I'm going to draw it again. Right here, you have the mean, okay? And all of this in pink is 100%, okay? Which means that what I'm going to put now in light green is 50%, okay? So for part A, Write down the percentage of bags that weigh more than 500 grams. Well, my mean is 500 grams, so everything to the right of it is going to be what I'm putting in green, because right here we have 500. And so the percent for part A is just going to be 50%. I'm about to show you a different way to get to that. Just give me a second, okay? Later on, they tell us that. Um... A bag that weighs less than 495 grams is rejected by the factory for being underweight. And we need to find the probability that a randomly chosen bag is rejected for being underweight. And so if my randomly selected bag weighs less than 495, it is rejected. See? So that means I need to sort of find the number that goes roughly, very, very roughly, from like here to here. See? So that is the area that I'm trying to find, or the probability. Hint, big hint. Area under a curve equals probability, okay? Area under a curve equals probability in this case. So we're trying to find the stuff in orange with this little bit here being 495. So basically from zero to 495, I'm gonna be highlighting this whole thing in orange. That is the area that we're trying to find. And so, It's pretty clear what we need to do, see? We need to find the area of the thing in orange. But what can be much more useful, especially the day of the test, is understanding which tools you have at your disposal. You do have 
your formula, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you do have your graphing calculator. Yeah, and your graphing calculator has a whole ass section with distributions. Dead ass. So if you go ahead and press second with blue and the bars, you hit that distribution button. See? So once I'm here, I have three main tools that I need you to focus on. You have normal PDF, normal CDF, and inventory normal. See? The next couple of minutes is going to be me going over each of these. Okay? And so for PDF, you're going to be using PDF for you have the question, what is the probability of getting X number? See? So this is for uh, PDF. See? Normal PDF. If you have the question, what is the probability of getting a number between X and Y? This is going to be CDF. All right. Finally, if my probability or area is X, what is my Y boundary? You will use inventory normal. Okay. For this exercise, we will be using CDF and PDF. All right. Now, you can memorize this. Okay. You can memorize this. What is PDF? What is CDF? What is inventory normal? And you're good to go. What I suggest is that you play around with it and get to know your calculator. See? So if you press normal PDF, what does, does it ask for? It asks for a Y value. That symbol in the middle is mean. And the symbol in the bottom is standard deviation. And so if you give it all of that, it's going to give you the probability of landing that number exactly. Okay? That being said, if I look at normal CDF, whoops. If I look at normal CDF, I see it asks for a lower, an upper, the mean, and the standard deviation. And so the lower and upper makes reference to the between I'm talking about, between x and y. See? So basically, I would take my normal distribution, and I would ask, say, from here to here, what is the probability that I land the number from, that is in here? See? And so that would be my x, that would be my y, that would be my lower, that would be my upper. All right? And so that is actually what we're going to use for part B, see? So for part B, what is my lower? Well, um, since we're looking for bags that get rejected, see? Bags that get rejected weigh less than 495, so my lower is going to be zero, and my upper is going to be 495. All right, cool. So I can actually go lower is zero, upper is 495, my mean is 500, my standard deviation is 3. How do I know that my standard deviation is 3? Context. Context matters. Buzzwords matter. What did I highlight initially? Mean is 500, standard deviation is 3. Okay? Okay. Go ahead and paste. There you go. It is that. See? So for part B, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it down here. So, so for part B, we found... All right, we found 0 0.0477903, which is the same as in significant figures, 0 0.0478, which if I put it in percent will be, oh, my bad, it will be 4.78%, okay? If you're not sure how I did this jump here, remember this, 1 is 100%. 0 0.5 is 50 percent 0 0.05 is 5 percent as long as you remember those three examples you can figure out virtually any percent out see the big trick is multiplying or dividing by 100. okay uh yeah well, that is for part b see before moving on to part c let me show you a little bit how you can use a uh, cdf for part a vale? so for part a it's right on the percentage of banks that weigh more than 500 g so that means that my lower is 500 and my upper is, you know, like basically positive infinity. See, like anything above 500. And so what you can do actually is pull up the CDF, put lower 500, upper, just put like a really big number. Like that's basically infinity. Go ahead and paste. That's basically 50%. There it is. See, so that's a, another way to figure out part A. Again, I'm just showing you so you get familiar with your tools. PDF is probably you're getting a specific number. Uh, CDF is lower and upper bounds. And inventory normal is if you have the area and you're trying to find your boundaries. Which is part C. 
So for part C, we have that a bag that weighs more than k grams, okay, is rejected by the factory for being overweight. The factory rejects 2% of bags for being overweight, and we need to find the value of k. All right, interesting. So here we have the area. What is the area? Well, I said that area has to do with probability. 2% of bags, see? 2% for 0 0.02, okay? Get rejected for being overweight. Now, if I imagine a little bit, cierto? My distribution, okay? We have this 2% being way at the very top. See, this, this is 2%, see? All right, interesting. So what number is that? Well, let's figure it out. So I have my probability. See, so I have to work around that. I have inventory normal here. The area we said was 0 0.02. See? The mean, we're going to say is 500. Standard deviation is 3. Go ahead and plug it in. This is what I get. See? Now, I got 493. So that's interesting. See, I got 493, which is, if my mean is here, 500, I got 493 over here. Something is wrong. See? Well, this is where it gets super interesting. See? You need to understand what you're asking your calculator. If you plug in for the area 0 0.02, at least in the TA84, I know some more modern, modern ones have different options. You can go around it. But for the TA84, when you use inventory normal and put in 2%, you're asking it, it to go from 0 to 2% and to spit back the x value. Cierto? So essentially, you're asking your calculator when you plug in 0.02% is that you're telling it, okay, so go from 0%, reach 2%, and give me that x value. See? And that x value, the calculator told me, is 493. See? 493.83. And so what it's actually giving you is the weight of the bags that are the 2% that weigh the least. So the most underweight ones, the ones that weigh the lightest that are in, within the 2% realm of them is 493 grams and below. Okay, that is what I just found. And so if I want to go for the 2% over there, ¿cierto? actually, since this is 100, I need, would need to plug in 98% here. Ah, context matters. Wow. So, distribution, inventory normal. I plug in 0.98, go ahead and paste. It gives me 506. And so, the x value of my bags that weigh, that are in the top 2%, so the ones that weigh the most, in the top 2% are 506 grams. 0.161 and up. See? And so for part C, uh, the bag that weighs more than k grams that gets rejected for being the top 2% are any that go or that have the weight of 506.161 grams or up. See? So it's in three significant figures, we would say it's 506. Don't forget your units, grams. All right, so that is for number eight. I think the most important thing, in my opinion, honestly, is understanding your three tools. If you understand what PDF, CDF, and Inventory Normal do, you, and intuitively when to use which, dude, you're good to go, straight up. That is for number eight.